Serbia was a nation at the cusp of reviving its royal legacy, only to witness its monarchist movement diverted by former communists. This is Serbia's story, a land where the pursuit of monarchy is overshadowed by political paradoxes. Join me on a historical journey to discover Serbia's rich past, the evolution of its dynasties, the state of monarchism today, and insight from recent surveys. Serbs settled in the Balkans in the 6th and 7th century, with the most prominent settlement being the first Serbian principality of the Vladimirovic dynasty, ruling over modern-day Montenegro, Bosnia, Dalmatia and Serbia. It evolved into Grand Principality by the 11th century, and in 1217, the Kingdom and National Church were established under the Nemanjic dynasty. In 1346, the brief Serbian Empire was established, spanning most of the Balkan Peninsula. The Turks seized the entire Serbian territory by 1459, when Smederevo fell into their hands. Serbia was ruled by the Ottoman Empire for centuries to come. A significant number of Serbs migrated north to the Kingdom of Hungary, continuing the life of Serbian despotate until 1537, when the last despot of Serbia, Pavle Bakic, fell in the Battle of Gorjani. The establishment of modern Serbia was marked by the hard-fought autonomy from the Ottoman Empire in the First Serbian Uprising in 1804, which was led by Karadžorđe, founder of the Karadžorđević dynasty, and in the Second Serbian Uprising, led by Miloš Obrenović, founder of the Obrenović dynasty. Serbia gained full recognition and independence in the Berlin Congress of 1878. At the heart of Serbia's internal politics of the time was the rivalry between the Obrenović and Karadžorđević dynasties, their struggle for power and influence shaped the nation's destiny, culminating in the tragic end of the Obrenović dynasty in 1903, when a group of Serbian officers murdered the royal family. As the victor of the Balkan Wars from 1912 to 1913, Serbia regained Vardar Macedonia, Kosovo and Metohija and Raška. In late 1918, with the defeat of Austro-Hungarian Empire, Serbia was expanded to include regions of former Serbian Vojvodina. Serbia was also united with other Austro-Hungarian provinces into a pan-Slavic state later known as Yugoslavia. After the World War II, Yugoslavia emerged as a communist federation. The abrupt abolition of the monarchy and the rise of Tito's regime marked a dark chapter characterized by oppression and loss. The ascent of Tito's regime marked a somber chapter in Yugoslavia's history. Swiftly adopting Stalin's constitution and Stalin's policies, the government embarked on a campaign that severely undermined civil liberties and inflicted untold suffering on the civilian population. Across Yugoslavia, the toll was harrowing. Over 300,000 civilian lives were brutally extinguished. Millions were stripped of their properties, compelling a vast number of Yugoslavs to seek refuge and new beginnings in Western Europe, in nations like France and the United Kingdom, and further in Canada, the United States and Australia. Crown Prince Alexander of Serbia and Yugoslavia, leading the Karadžorđević dynasty, stands at the forefront of the movement to reinstate a constitutional monarchy in Serbia. Between the 1970s and 1990s, Alexander became a pivotal figure for the Serbian diaspora, embodying the aspirations for civil society and democratic values in Serbia. And then the fall of communism happened. The 1990s ushered in an era of conflict in Yugoslavia, a period marked by profound transformation. Former communists, enforcers of totalitarian regime and suppressors of religious and democratic freedoms underwent a dramatic metamorphosis. 
seemingly overnight. They emerged as vocal advocates for the very religious groups and democratic ideals they had previously persecuted. These newly minted national leaders swiftly aligned themselves with diaspora organizations, embarking on tours across the West to trump the support and funds. Their narrative oscillated between portraying themselves as victims of communist oppression and exploiting historical animosities from World War II, with the latter tactic proving particularly effective. This paradoxical situation was akin to a pyromaniac taking the role of the firefighter. As they orchestrated and capitalized on the revival of wartime atrocities, they managed to secure increasing financial support under the guise of peacemaking, leaving in their wake a trail of refugees and devastation. Despite the indictment of several of these leaders for war crimes, the wealth they amassed remained largely untouched. They transitioned seemingly into roles as promoters of democracy, leaving a complex legacy behind. So what can we say what happened with monarchism in Serbia? The perception of monarchism in Serbia shifted dramatically. Previously aligned with anti-communist and pro-democratic ideals, monarchism faced a rebranding as a movement associated with war criminals and anti-democratic sentiment. Crown Prince Alexander, once a rallying figure for democratic principles, found himself marginalized. Democratic factions viewed him as a rival, while monarchists grappled with an identity crisis, got their beliefs now seemingly aligned more closely with revolutionary communism as evidenced by the growing support for figures like Putin among certain segments. The voice of pro-democratic monarchists dimmed, overshadowed by the stigma of the 90s. In the Serbian parliament, openly monarchist MPs, once a visible presence, became scarce, occasionally expressing their monarchist leanings. Monarchist organizations, meanwhile, suffered from internal divisions and growing animosities. Yet, not all hope was lost for the monarchist movement. Crown Prince Alexander established a significant movement over the past 15 years, maintaining a distance from the direct political involvement. His movement, boasting a substantial national and international membership, advocates for the core monarchist values of stability, continuity, and unity. And now, let's dig deep into the findings of our recent survey to understand the public sentiment in Serbia. It tells us a lot about the country and the system running it when significant 94.66% of respondents express dissatisfaction with current political system, while 88% feel underrepresented, with 93.4% believing in importance of democracy, suggesting that Serbians value democratic system and republican system did not deliver that expectation. Familiarity with the concept of monarchy was high, with 96% of respondents acknowledging and understanding of it. Interestingly, 37.1% of respondents said that they would support restoration of monarchy. And if an executive role was put in the mix, then support for monarchism grows to 54.28%. As we've journeyed through the history of Serbian monarchism, we've seen the rise and fall of dynasties, the impact of foreign rule, and the struggle for national identity. The survey results reflect a Serbia at a crossroads, with a significant portion of the population dissatisfied with the current political system, yet split about the role of monarchy in modern governance. The question then arises, what is the future of monarchism in Serbia? 
the legacy of Crown Prince Alexander and his efforts to promote monarchism as a symbol of stability, continuity and unity offers a glimpse into one possible future. Yet the shadows of the past and the complexity of contemporary politics cannot be ignored. The enigma of Serbian monarchism continues to be topic of debate and reflection. It symbolizes not just a political choice, but a deep-rooted historical and cultural narrative that continues to influence Serbian society. What are your thoughts on this? Should Serbia restore monarchy? A huge thank you to our patrons and YouTube member supporters. If you're able, consider supporting TMC to further our mission. Remember to engage with this video to help our channel grow. Like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.